Hello everyone, welcome back to another Commander Deck Tech video. If you are enjoying these, hit the subscribe button, like, comment, share, hit that notification bell as well because you don't want to miss out on any future videos, any future deck techs. We're going back to Kaldheim for yet another Commander. This one is an uncommon 2 mana Death Touch 1 3 Finn the Fangbearer. He's a legendary human warrior, and whenever a creature you control with Death Touch deals combat damage to a player, that player gets two poison counters. So it's not Infect. I mean, they wouldn't just bring Infect back. It's one of the most hated abilities. But they'll do the next best thing. They'll make poison counters even easier to get by just making it so that whenever a Death Touch creature deals combat damage to a player, they get two of them. So in some ways this is better than Infect, in some ways it's worse. Obviously, if you can only deal two poison counters per combat damage, you're going to have to attack with at least five death touch creatures and deal combat damage with them, killing off one player. So it's not as broken as Infect, but it really helps give us a theme to build around, which is really just dealing combat damage. We are going to focus on poisoning our opponents, of course. That's going to be uh, <laughs> probably the main way that we win. But there's other things you can do. You can draw cards off of combat damage. So we're also going to want that value too. So starting it off here with our lands, this is the most boring part of the deck. We have 32 forests. We have an Ink Moth Nexus because we are going to be playing some Infect cards in here. We're not just going to leave it up to our Death Touch creatures. We have Karn's Bastion because it's proliferate on the land and once you get those poison counters on your opponents it's just every turn at the very least you can proliferate and add more or in reef the vast wood just to make our tiny death touch creatures a little bit bigger most of them are just one ones they're tiny creatures and if they get a plus one plus one counter it means that not only will they have death touch they'll be able to survive a lot more we have rogue's passage goes without saying make a creature unblockable if it has death touch you'll be able to deal those two poison counters anyway death touch is usually a deterrence for people blocking because they'll lose their creature if they block but sometimes we don't want to leave it up to chance now war room is a fantastic land i mean i see it everywhere in monocolored decks now if you pay one life and four mana effectively because you have to tap this in addition to the three mana you get to draw a card if you have nothing else to do with that mana that's perfect so let's start it off here with, you know, the immediate, the big part of the deck here, Death Touch. That's what we're going to try to focus on. We have a ton of these little one mana Death Touch creatures. That's kind of the point of the deck. You get them out there quickly, and then once you get Finn out there, you'll be able to then deal combat damage and then inflict your poison counters. So we have Moss Viper, just a 1-1 one -one with Death Touch, Narnum Renegade, Sedge Scorpion, another 1-1 one -one Death Touch, Tijeru Blightblade, Wasteland Viper. They have other abilities, they're not super relevant, but Ambush Viper has Flash, so you can flash it into play, and then kind of, you know, quite literally ambush an opponent, give them some extra poison counters, and maybe even kill them off. We have Deadly Recluse, another Death Touch creature. Now we're starting to get into 2 mana, so you get some other abilities here like Reach. So it's a very good blocker. We have Air of the Wilds, another 2 mana Death Touch creature. Thornweld Archer also has Reach and Death Touch. Bow of Nylea isn't a creature, but attacking creatures we control have Death Touch. So if we have any creatures out there without Death Touch, and we do have some, we can just attack with them and give them Death Touch that way. We have Hornet Nest. When it's dealt damage, we create that many 1-1 green insect creature tokens with flying and Death Touch. So it's a fantastic blocker. If it's dealt excess damage, you get that many 1-1 green hornets. And then we have Monvoli Beast Tracker. It's not a Death Touch creature itself, but she can tutor up one for us, which is very flexible because we do have some very useful ones in here that have Death Touch, but they serve other purposes, such as with Ronus the Indomitable. Maybe not going to attack immediately, but later on, it's going to be one of the better Death Touch creatures that you have. We have Skullwinder to kind of act as an Eternal Witness, but it's one that has Death Touch. It does help out an opponent. But uh, you're just going to have to be more political about that. We have Okame Adversary. Costs two less if an opponent has a green permanent, has death touch. And whenever it deals combat damage to a player, we get to draw a card. So you get the benefit of drawing cards off of dealing combat damage. Which is, again, something we want in here. It's not just about the poison counters. And then we have Questing Beast. Can't be blocked by creatures with power two or less. So it's a little bit evasive there. We have Vigilance, Death Touch, and Haste. So very good creature to get out there turn four. We have Acidic Slime. Enters the battlefield, it's good removal, also has Death Touch. And then we have God Eternal Ronus. 
Really good way if you just want to ambush an opponent, it enters the battlefield and then you double the power of each other creature you control until end of turn. Those creatures gain vigilance, so vigilance and death touch makes it very easy to just swing in and do whatever you want to do, get your combat damage triggers. And then we have Orin Frostfang, attacking creatures we control have death touch, and whenever a creature we control deals combat damage to a player, we draw a card. We have Worm Coil Engine because it's one of the best creatures in Commander, period. It dies, you get a 3-3 Worm Artifact Creature Token with Death Touch, so you'll get Death Touch either way. And then we have Hornet Queen, it has Death Touch, and she'll also get you four Hornets with uh, Death Touch as well. So, you know, pretty much like Hornet Nest, you're just going to keep getting more and more Death Touch creatures, and it's fantastic for this deck because there's so much value in getting those creatures that you're going to want to attack with every single turn because they're little, they have Death Touch, and... I mean, who wants to block at 1-1 if it means you're going to lose your blocker? Not many people. We have some protection in here because, you know, our commander is kind of essential, but so are so many of our creatures. We have a ton of tiny creatures. They're easier to deal with with board wipes. We want to keep them out there if we can help it. We have heroic intervention. Permanents you control gain hexproof and indestructible until end of turn. Lightning greaves. Swift foot boots. Sword of Truth and Justice, so we can give a creature protection from white and from blue, and whenever that equipped creature deals combat damage to a player, we put a plus one plus one counter on a creature we control and then we proliferate, so very good for an infect strategy. Anytime you can proliferate, you're just going to add another poison counter, and you can also put a plus one plus one counter on a death touch creature you control, make it a little bit bigger. And then we have Whisper Silk Cloak, it's protection combined with evasion, so it can't be blocked, it has shroud. What's not to like about that? And then we have Asceticism. Creatures you control can't be the targets of spells or abilities your opponents control, and we can pay two mana to regenerate a target creature, so... Just another way to retain whatever board presence we have. We have some good card draw in here, and green is no stranger to some pretty good card draw. Sylvan Library, one of the best enchantments ever made. Again, if you ever wondered how willing people are to lose life for card draw, just look at Sylvan Library. So many games where people just willingly go down 8 life. Lifecrafter's best Gieri because whenever you cast a tiny creature spell with Death Touch, you can pay an additional green mana and then draw a card. We have Beast Whisperer. Whenever we cast a creature spell, we draw a card. We have Guardian Project. Whenever a non-token creature enters the battlefield under your control, if it doesn't have the same name as another creature you control or a creature in your graveyard, draw a card. We have Harmonize to draw three cards for four mana. We have Toski, Bearer of Secrets. Can't be countered, indestructible, it attacks each combat if able. And whenever a creature you control deals combat damage to a player, you draw a card. So kind of like with Orin Frostfang, this is a coastal piracy ability. You're going to benefit from combat damage in more ways than just one. We have Return of the Wild Speaker, which is probably one of the better green cards that come out in a long time. You draw cards equal to the greatest power among non-human creatures you control, or you could have it so that non-human creatures you control get plus three, plus three until end of turn. I think just that versatility makes it one of the best green cards in Commander. And then we of course have the Great Henge, because <laughs> this is yet another really fantastic card. Probably the best green card to come out in the last two years. It can tap for two mana, you gain two life, and whenever an auto-token creature enters the battlefield under your control, you put a plus one plus one counter on it, and you draw a card. So it's just insane value. We also have some Infect here. We have Glistener Elf, Blight Mamba, Evolution Sage, not really Infect, but this category is focusing on proliferate and just getting more poison counters so we have iridian corruptor we have triumph of the hordes triumph is not super powerful in this deck compared to where you put it in other decks but it's just a quick way if you want to get it out of the way if you want to end a game triumph of the hordes four mana sorcery pretty good overrun ability and we have rexian swarm lord so you get more creatures with uh, infect never really hurts to get more creature production we have foreign Clex monstrous raider not death touch it's just going to double the counters that you put on your opponents so if you're putting poison counters on them if you're putting two at a time that's going to be four at a time instead and that's going to be pretty quickly instead of needing like five creatures to end someone's game you only really need three and then we have plain wide celebration this is such an underrated card mostly in here because you can just end the game off of choosing that third mode so you can proliferate four times the other abilities are nothing really bad, but if you can proliferate four times, you don't have to do that much to win. And we have some evasion in here. I think this is just something that 
you're going to want to play if you need to deal combat damage. So Rancor, plus 2, plus 0, and Trample. In addition to Death Touch, it's just such a powerful card because you can get it back consistently. And we have Champion of Lamholt, a lot of tiny creatures, a lot of creatures that are going to be entering. She just needs to get big enough, and then all of our creatures can pretty much be unblockable. We have Bellowing Tangle Worm, Intimidate other green creatures we control, have Intimidate. So it can't be blocked except by artifact creatures and or creatures that share a color with it. So hopefully whoever we're swinging on doesn't have any green or artifact creatures. And then we have Crater Hoof Behemoth. Kind of overkill, but hey, we want to deal that combat damage. Get some trample, get uh, massive power and toughness. So even if you're not going to poison them, you could probably just kill them with normal combat damage. We do have some mana producers in here. I forgot about this earlier, but we have Elvish Mystic, Finhorn Elves. Land of War Elves, Soul Ring, Wild Growth, Arcane Signet, and 3 Visits. We don't really want to get above 2 mana because our commander's 2 mana. So if we can keep it to those 1 mana mana producers, we're going to be good. And then we have Removal in here. We have Nature's Claim. Viridian Longbow is very unique. Whenever your deck focuses on Death Touch, it never really hurts to have one of these. Because the equipped creature just has to tap to deal 1 damage to a target creature and it's dead. Similar reason we're playing Ram Through for 2 mana at instant speed, it's very unique. Target creature you control deals damage equal to its power to target creature you don't control. And if it has Trample, it deals excess damage to that player. And Beast Within, fantastic removal spell. Colony Ambush, target creature you control fights target creature you don't control, so another fight spell. Also has the benefit of being a land if we need a land. We have Cross and Grip, split second can deal with so many combos and then we have a reclamation sage to round it up so anyway guys let me know what you think about finn the fang bearer this is such a cool commander deck it's also one you can experiment with on a budget because he's an uncommon and a lot of those creatures are just common creatures and uncommons you're not really going to be looking for anything super expensive. You can go for things like doubling season if that's what you want to do. But really focus on card draw. I think that's such an underrated part of this commander. Is that the poison counters are a bit of a distraction. You can easily, if you have a ton of death touch creatures, deal combat damage. So take advantage of other ways that you can get that value. But as always, if you enjoyed the video, subscribe, like, comment, share, hit the notification bell so you don't miss any future videos. See you all next time. Void here signing off. Have a wonderful day.